Today is part one, week two, of the first quarter of biology lectures. And today I'll be speaking with you about the cell. So actually both this week and next week. This week we're going to talk about cellular function and structure. And we're going to start with the fundamental functions that all cells have to undergo. It's important to know that there is something known as the basic cellular theory, which is shown in this diagram. That cellular theory says that all living things are composed of, of cells. They can have one or more cells, but that the cell is the smallest unit that contains the properties of life. And we talked about the properties of life last week. The third aspect of cellular theory is that all new cells must come from prior existing cells. And remember, we also talked last week about spontaneous generation. Well, now we're going to talk about some functions. And some basic cellular functions include absorption, which is the ability to transport dissolved substances into the cell the key word here that separates absorption from other intake processes is the dissolved substances. Another function of the cell is digestion, and that is once substances are taken into the cell, many times they have to be broken down in ways that allow for them to be used in various functions in the cell. And digestion is the process where we break down absorbed substances. The third aspect is called respiration. And this is a specific form of breakdown in which food molecules, which many times result from digestion after absorption, those food molecules are then broken down in such a way that energy is released, captured, and then used for the cell's uh, functions. Another important part of every cell is its ability to remove waste material from the cell. Anytime living processes occur, there's always waste that accumulates. And a, and a cell or a system has to be able to remove those waste products. In the case of excretion, the key word again is soluble waste product. So excretion is the removal of soluble waste product, whereas egestion is the removable, removal of non-soluble waste products. And then thirdly, secretion is the release of synthesized substances. These are not necessarily waste products. These can be products that are um, hormones or other uh, things that are used by other parts of the living system. So these six things in the last two slides represent uh, the cellular functions that cells generally undergo. Another group of functions that happen, and I show a diagram of the cell membrane because it is important in this function, and, and that is the allowing of movement. Now, cells have various methods in which they move. As you probably have read already, prokaryotic cells are, usually have little hair-like projections known as cilia, which project from the cell membrane, or a larger whip-like structure called a flagellum. Both of these are responsible for the movement uh, of the cell. Now, also, when we talk about movement, we have to talk about the ability to transport substances within the cell from one aspect of the cell to another. For example, there are, there are functions that occur that transport materials from the cytoplasm of the cell to the nucleus and from the nucleus of the cell to the cytoplasm. A second function of the membrane is the ability to respond or sense changes in the environment. This is known as irritability. Now, when we use irritability in the layman situation, many times we're speaking about uh, somebody that's cranky or hard to get along with. But when a scientist or biologist uses the term irritability, he is speaking specifically about the ability to sense and respond to changes in environment. 
The cell membrane is also important to uh, maintain what is known as homeostasis. And you'll hear this term used quite a bit because homeostasis is one of those things that cells and living systems strive to maintain throughout their existence. And this means to have all the concentrations of substances and all the things that are going on within the cell to be running according to the design of the cell or how it was designed to run. And there are many processes that go on that we'll talk about in the future that whose function it is is to maintain homeostasis. Now as we move from function to structure, we begin by talking about a structure that is only present in plant cells. And that is, not, that is the cell wall. The cell wall, again, found only in plant cells, is a rigid structure that is actually on the outside of the cell membrane and protects the cell from various uh, insults. The cell wall also many times serves to maintain the cell's integrity and posture. The cell wall is composed of, composed of many things. The most important chemical that's in part of the cell wall is called pectin. And pectin is a carbohydrate structure, and we'll talk about what carbohydrates are. Just as an aside, the term carbo means made of carbon, and hydrate means having water. So a carbohydrate is something that is composed primarily of carbon and water. It's actually composed of glucose and various uh, glucose molecules linked together. But this pectin, which is not found in animal cells, is part of the cell wall. And it's actually the middle part between what's known as the primary cell wall and the secondary cell wall. And you can see my arrow here. This is the middle aspect of the cell wall. This is where the pectin is then the primary cell wall is on this side of the pectin and the secondary cell wall is on the interior with the cell membrane being on the inside. This is also known as the middle lamella because you have a, a similar primary and secondary cell wall on the outside. So the middle lamella is composed of this pectin substance or this carbohydrate then you have next to the middle lamella, you have the primary cell wall on both sides here, and then the secondary cell wall outside or inside, depending on which side of the cell you're on. The second aspect of the cell the structure that I want to look at is the plasma membrane. Now, I mentioned the plasma membrane previously, and you need to understand that the plasma membrane's purpose is primarily to maintain homeostasis by keeping everything that's outside the cell outside and by keeping everything inside the cell inside. Think of it as the cell's skin. Our skin protects us from outside uh, chemicals and materials and keeps all our internal chemicals and materials within our bodies. On this side, we have a diagram that's representative of a cell membrane from an animal and this is a plant cell which also has a cell membrane you notice it shows the cell membrane here it's a, you know it's a plant cell because it has a cell wall now the other way you know it's a plant cell is plant cells tend to have a very large central vacuole like this which is an area w which stores a lot of solutes that the plant uses like glucose and other solutes that they, the plant cell uses for, for energy. Now within the cell wall, say if this is the inside of the cell and this is the outside of the cell, within the cell wall is the, what's known as the cytoplasm. Now all this material here that's not part of an organelle is also known as a cytoplasm. And this is a jelly-like fluid that's inside the cell in which the organelles are suspended. Now, when the cell needs to move things around in, within the cell, one thing that the cell can do is cause this cytoplasm to stream 
or move and then in the process of streaming say if it has some material here and it needs to get it to the nucleus it can stream that material around the outside and get it to the nucleus that way so that's what's known as cytoplasmic streaming the next structure I want to talk about is pointed out right here now if you've been reading ahead you know what I'm talking about here this is called the mitochondria mitochondria is the plural mitochondrion o n is the singular the mitochondria is the organelles that convert food or nutrients into energy they are frequently called the quote unquote powerhouse of the cell the next structure pointed out here and one thing I'll point out about this structure that you need to make sure you notice notice how there's a thick wall here and that's what separates this structure from other round structures like that are like here and that thick wall is there because these are lysosomes and lysosomes are responsible for the breakdown of molecules so they have aggressive enzymes within them that break down proteins carbohydrates and lipids so if you're going to have a bag of acid let's just say molecular acid in here that's going to be used to break these substances down you do not want it to escape within the cell therefore you're going to put it into a thick walled structure that is very tough and 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 will hold on to that material without letting it go and so that's why the lysosomes can be identified by their thick walls now here are the third structures and you'll notice and I purposely did this that this one's attached to these folding membranes and there are several of them attached to this folding membrane but then there are loose small of these that are just floating around in the cytoplasm now this is known as the ribosome a ribosome is responsible for attaching itself to the DNA or excuse me the RNA template and producing proteins and when we talk about how RNA and proteins are made we'll go into more detail about how the ribosome works but just know that there are two kinds of ribosomes there's ribosomes that are free in the cytoplasm and then there's ribosomes that are associated with this material which we're going to talk about in just a second So you'll notice that this cell also shows these membranes with the ribosomes attached, which I think I've had a definition here. This is called the endoplasmic reticulum, okay? The endoplasmic reticulum is this folding of membranes within the cell, okay? And it folds back, but you can also have it where it looks like this okay it doesn't have ribosomes attached so the endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle that's composed of a network of folded membranes now if it's dotted with these ribosomes it's called rough endoplasmic reticulum on the other hand if it does not have this material the ribosomes attached it's called smooth endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum, because it has all these ribosomes, functions to produce protein. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it doesn't have the ribosomes, so it doesn't produce protein, but it produces other chemicals that the cell needs. So I'm going to take a break at this point and move on to the next part in which we'll continue to talk about structures within the cell.